Thank you so much. All right, well, first off, thank you so much for the introduction. Uh, it's really exciting to be here today and to see all of these faces who are excited and passionate about Mars. Um, so I'll jump into it. When I was five years old, I looked up at the night sky and I imagined my closet spaceship and took imaginary journeys through the cosmos. When I was 10, I read every science fiction book about space that I could get my hands on. When I was 13, these dreams began to take shape into a reality when I saw my first in-person launch, which was STS-134 Space Shuttle Endeavor, the second to last shuttle ever to launch. Uh, I also started a Twitter account and a blog to share my future goals and my journey towards becoming an astronaut. And during this trip, I met an astronaut who would become my role model and mentor. Uh, growing up, I was incredibly fortunate to have a supportive community. This community started with my mom and grew to include teachers, science mentors, an astronaut mentor, and now a worldwide community of people on social media. The common thread that ties all of these people together is their excitement for my journey to Mars. But even more than that, it's about our journey to Mars as a society and as humanity. Before I go any further, I'd like to take a moment to once again recognize what a unique experience this is to be here today at the Humans to Mars conference speaking, because I can assume that everyone here is a staunch proponent of human exploration of Mars. Um, whereas many of you might know, there's still some division or fractioning in the space community about whether or not we should have our time and resources in human spaceflight or spaceflight at all. Uh, so it's, it's really nice to not have to address that question and instead be able to talk about something which I, am, I think is more important. Rather than addressing should we go to Mars, I'm going to address how we will go to Mars. Today we've already heard from a variety of people who have talked about the technological infrastructures to Mars and instead I am going to address something else which is equally uh, important on our journey to Mars and that is uh, continuing to create a community that is ready for a journey to Mars. So I'm talking about uh, continuing to increase the excitement that the public has for human space exploration and especially for exploring Mars, as well as creating a group of youth who will grow to become the scientists and the engineers who will make this possible in 10 or 15 or 20 years. So in order to see this goal of putting footprints on the regolith of Mars achieved, to continue excellence in space exploration, we must increase investing in it now. We must invest more in the partnerships with other nations and with private industry. We must invest more in the infrastructure necessary to make these dreams realities in 15 or 20 or such years. But most importantly, we must invest more in the youth of today to help them become the scientists, the engineers, the policy makers, educators, artists, interpreters, and leaders of tomorrow who will change our abilities both on this world and off of it. That's what I'm here today to talk about. What do we need to be doing reality tomorrow? So I'd like to start off with a personal anecdote uh, it's a, just a comment that I get a lot when I talk to people about both what my dream is and what I'm doing to achieve that dream. And it's as follows. Wow, you're so lucky to already know exactly what you want to do with your life. And this is true. I am lucky. And as a kid, I was lucky. I had developed a dream, a passion, a goal early on in life. But it's more than that. Not only did I already have a dream, but I was able to hold on to and develop this goal because of the environment in which I grew up. Growing up, I had a lot of opportunities that fed and nurtured my dream and allowed me to take hold of it at a young age. In elementary school, I was part of uh, a group called Mad Scientists, which was an after school program. In middle school, I was in something called Girls in Engineering, Math or Science. Um, which you can, you can see my, my GEMS group here. I was also in rocketry, science bowl, and high altitude weather balloon research, all of which were offered as extracurriculars through the fantastic public school system of Minnesota. 
uh, in high school, I was in the Project Lead the Way program, which is an engineering program in, uh, run through the University of Minnesota. And when I was 15, I left high school to uh, partake in an early college program also run through the state of Minnesota. It was these experiences which sustained my excitement for and love of STEM. So I'm sure most of us here are familiar with that acronym. STEM is science, technology, engineering, and math. And I'll refer to it pretty frequently throughout this. So these experiences eventually led me to be where I am today, to have been able to go out and work with astronauts on the International Space Station uh, as an Earth liaison, to be able to spread the experiences of seeing launches and visiting space agencies to over half a million people who now follow my social media channels. So the issue is that a lot of students don't have these types of opportunities. They don't have things like GEMS or Science Bowl or opportunities to go to space camp or anything else that's amazing and hands-on and exciting in the STEM fields. Uh, the kinds of opportunities which would inspire and excite them to either start or retain an interest in STEM. That's a pretty dismal thought, right? To think that we are losing on out on unknown amounts of talent and genius, the kinds of talent and genius which could change the world because a kid wasn't engaged, supported, or inspired. One way which we can fix this, one way which we can continue to inspire youth to a greater degree and to excite the next generation to be interested in STEM and space exploration is to invest in space exploration. So space exploration has this incredible capacity to inspire people of all ages. There is no subject which excites people more than space exploration. I've spoken in hundreds of classrooms, ranging from kindergartners all the way up to high school seniors, so I can tell you from personal experience that when you walk into a classroom and you talk about human space exploration, kids' eyes light up. When, uh, when you tell stories about uh, the silly and serious things that happen in space, when you show photos and videos of rocket launches, spacewalks, or even just astronauts playing with their food in space, you're teaching kids that nothing is impossible and that no goal or dream is too big or too unattainable. So there's a famous song lyric which I think really sums this idea up, and it's by Paul Bryant who I have to admit that I probably should have listened to the song before I gave the speech because I've never heard the song. Um, but I, I love the quote and I've loved this quote for a long time. And it's, don't tell me that the sky's the limit when there are footprints on the moon. We raised a generation of students to believe that anything was impossible by showing them footprints on the moon, by showing them that we can go out and do great things, and by doing great things, become great. How can a student not believe that anything is possible when we have humans in space? However, a human presence in exploring low Earth orbit, doing things like going to the moon and maintaining the International Space Station are incredible, and they're valuable. They're incredibly valuable, you could say. But it doesn't have the same sense of inspiration that going to Mars will, or that going to the moon did. We saw this happen during the Apollo program. We saw a generation of students who were inspired to dream big. We saw a boom both in the industry of science and technology and in the number of students who were entering these fields during the Apollo era. The shuttle era continued to do this by inspiring us to greatness. And now we are ready for the Orion era to reinvigorate this trend towards STEM. My generation, the Mars generation, will reach for new frontiers, both in space and on Earth. But as great of a capacity as space exploration has to inspire and engage young people into passionately pursuing STEM careers, it cannot do it on its own. Space exploration needs to have an intermediary or a bridge of sorts that translates human space travel into inspiration and interactive opportunities for young people. For the industry professionals, including astronauts Kent Rominger, Wendy Lawrence, and Dottie Metcalf Lindenberger, as well as engineers from Boeing and Orbital ATK, an education expert, communicators, nonprofit experts, and many others, 
uh, collected to form the Mars Generation. The Mars Generation is a 501c3 nonprofit whose mission is to excite young people and adults about human spe space exploration and STEM, as well as foster an understanding of the importance of these two elements to the future of humankind on Earth. The Mars Generation works to advance public interest in human space exploration and advocate for NASA's journey to Mars. The Mars Generation also serves as a means of identifying students with an interest in these areas and nurturing their studies in STEM education. The three methods through which the Mars Generation has and will continue to achieve these goals are inspiration, education, and empowerment. So first off, we have inspiration. One of the core programs of the Mars Generation is to provide full paid scholarships, including transportation, for students who live at or below the national poverty line to attend space camp. Despite this being our first year as a nonprofit, the Mars Generation has already awarded 10 full scholarships to outstanding students. Thank you. Um, so space camp can be a life-changing experience, and I fully expect to see each of our scholars go on to do great things in the future. That brings me to my next point, which is education. I've been conducting education and outreach through my worldwide outreach program for over three years now. It started when I was 15 years old, and I got to work with Italian astronaut Luca Parmitano during his stay on the International Space Station as his Earth liaison, and it has now developed into something more, something that is uh, encompassing more people to go out and do outreach as well. So the Mars Generation is hoping to educate people not only about the inspiration, but also about the positive impacts that human space exploration has on society. Things such as the economic advantages, technological increases, and job growth that accompany great strides in space exploration. However, as much as I could go on for quite a while about the positive impacts that space exploration has on our community, I am sure that for this audience, there is no need to do that. I am preaching to the choir when I say these things. So I will move on to the next point, which is empowerment. Uh, so empowerment and empower this is the portion of the Mars generation that I'm most excited to see develop. The idea behind empowerment is simple. The Mars generation inspires youth and provides them with support and guidance to do outreach and inspire people within their own communities. Our Student Space Ambassador program, which ha now has over 350 students, parents, and teachers signed up, provides a supportive community of, of peers and role models, as well as educational resources to encourage students to step up and share their own passions about human space exploration, STEM, or whatever else excites them with their communities. Every student has a unique way that they can reach out to their community. Some of them do it through speaking. Some of them do it through reading books to uh, kindergartners. Some of them do it through social media. And some of them do it through art or other means that I, I haven't mentioned. But the idea is that if you give students the tools and the confidence to go out and do these things, they will. My generation is excited about space exploration, and all we need is a little bit of help and support to be able to share that excitement. So as I talked about earlier, we're all on the same team here. We all want to see space exploration advance, to see humans set foot where we have never gone before, and to make great discoveries, and in essence, change the world. To do so, we must invest in our next generation, the Mars generation. I'd like to invite each and every one of you here today to join me, the advisory board of the Mars Generation, and our community of people from around the world in making this investment. I ask each of you to head on over to themarsgeneration.org or follow us on our social media platforms to learn more about what we're doing and how you can come, become involved the Mars, with the Mars Generation. We're making a difference today and tomorrow, and we couldn't do it without you. So I thank you for your time.